just like uh, last time we were in the maternity barn, we're back here again. Our maternity barn is attached to our milking parlor and our holding pen. So this is a great barn to have tours because it's all right here. We've got a couple of lovely ladies chewing their cud, listening to what we're up to. And uh, yes, it is milking time here. And uh, this group that we're looking at right here, they have already been milked and they've been uh, leaving the parlor. If I stand this way a little bit, you can see they, uh, the cows that are coming towards us, uh, they are leaving the parlor all done. And you can see another group of cows is walking on in. It's time for them to start gathering up for their milking. Um, that's our holding pen over there. There's a group that's uh, behind the gate. They're one separate group. And now this is a new group coming in behind them we have the gate that'll keep them separated. We never want our groups to mix together because then our cows would be going back to the wrong barn. So all these cows are starting to come on in. They know the, rut the routine. We milk 1,200 cows three times a day. And these cows will be milking for 10 months um, until the milk in their uh, body goes dry and they uh, become dry cows then and wait to have their next baby. So these guys are all lactating away. Lactation, that's a fancy word for milking. And uh, they're showing up. They show up at the same time three times a day. So we want to keep their routine as consistent and on time as possible. They don't like any, uh, they don't like us to mess with the routine. So they're very, um, uh, cows are creatures of habit. They like to do the same thing over and again, over and over and again, and they don't like surprises. So coming to the parlor is just another part of their day. And you can see they're just coming on in, tails are wagging, and uh, they'll be lining up. Meanwhile, these cows here, they're gonna uh, wait until all this group shows up. We'll close the gate and then these ladies then can head back down to their barn. So it's all very efficient. We have one gentleman who's coming. Uh, he's the one rounding them up and opening and closing the gates. And we have two uh, gentlemen that are in the parlor milking our cows right now. So we'll, uh, we'll get a closer look at our parlor uh, once we leave this area. Uh, but next from here, we're going to head on up and get a little closer look at how our cows leave the parlor and um, have a bird's eye view of our holding pen and our milking parlor. So we can start heading that way if there's no questions yet. Nope. And if anybody does have any questions, we would love to make sure to ask uh, Miss Emma those questions. You can put them in the Q&A section. Um, and keep them out of the chat and we will see them in Q&A and we'll be able to either answer them live um, or we'll try to answer them um, with, from one of our staff members. So what are we seeing? Um, we're seeing a lot of gates and pens. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, when our cows leave the parlor, we have um, technology. I'll show you when we get up to our little spot up here. Um, all of our cows are fitted with an RFID chip that's this little ah, <laughs> circle thing right here. It's a radio frequency ID chip. And it comes in really, really handy, especially when the cows are leaving the parlor, like these ladies right here. We have one who's kind of clogging up the works. <laughs> Come on, ladies. Uh, here they go. Let's see if we can get that number one. <laughs> she just doesn't want to move up there. Go on, lady. So these cows, they leave in single file. Uh, when they leave the parlor. Now, if we needed to uh, sort any of them out and either just like last week, the hoof trimmer came and uh, if, we, it if it was her turn to get her hooves trimmed, what we would do was have, uh, as they walk through these panels, that ear tag in their ear is red, the computer chip signals, the gate would swing open right here. I can't do that right now because I'll end up sorting a cow. <laughs> I gotta wait till these ladies all move on through. Um, but automatically this gate would swing open and she would be directed down into those gates that we were walking by. There's several different alleyways and then there's a larger pen on the other side. So if we had to check a pregnancy or uh, they needed to have a visit with uh, Brian, the hoof trimmer, uh, these gates would swing open naturally, uh, not naturally, it would be uh, part of the technology that the number uh, would trigger the gate and they would go down into their um, alleys. And this is really nice uh, technology for us because now we don't have to go to the barn and find them and get everybody all upset in the barn looking for just one cow. Our cows now essentially come to us uh, because of, of the nice RFID 
uh, chip technology that we have. So that's been very helpful in getting uh, cows uh, in getting them uh, over and uh, checked uh, in a timely manner. So besides walking through here, you can see on the other side, that's our holding pen. Those cows are waiting patiently for their turn to get milk. And there is a gate that you can see that's separating the two groups of cows and keeping them from mixing. And because um, all the groups come uh, separately, if we brought all 1,200 cows all together, first of all, we wouldn't have enough room. And second of all, they would be waiting and waiting. And that is time lost. They, we would rather have them comfortable and eating and resting in their barn rather than just standing here waiting all day for uh, to get milk. So that's why we have a strict schedule of who comes when and, uh, and they don't have to wait very long. So let's see if I can make this gate. Oh, nope, cows are still coming. So what we're gonna do is head on up and take a look down and see what all this looks like from above. So we'll head on through this door. We have a little uh, conference room up here that has an observation window. It's also a lot quieter. <laughs> so we can come up here. I'll open the window for you. And so, then you can see. Oh, yeah. As we're doing that, we have a couple of uh, questions that came in. Um, how long does it take to milk a cow? And I think we're about just about to learn that. We also want to know how much milk does a cow produce in one day? All right, so um, it takes less than five minutes. Uh, most of the time is spent waiting. You'll see the holding pen here on uh, the, I guess it's your right side <laughs> of here. So uh, that's where a lot of the time takes. Once they get into the parlor, which is over in that side, we have a double 24 parlor here. It's five minutes. The whole procedure of the pre and the post, uh, cleaning and milking, all of that. Uh, is under five minutes. So really they're in, they line up quickly and, uh, and we can get them all cleaned off and milkers on. And then uh, the actual milking is less than five minutes. And our, our cows are producing about 10 gallons of milk a day on average. So they're doing really great this time of year. If it gets really hot during the summer, that average will come down a bit and uh, uh, they don't like heat. Cows really, I think their optimum temperature, I believe is like 50 degrees. They like it nice and cool. And uh, so the cooler and more comfortable you can keep your cows, the more milk they're gonna give you. So uh, one of the main things about our holding pen in our parlor is that you can tell everybody's just sort of relaxed. They're hanging out. You can see a lot of cud chewing going on, a lot of ruminating here while they're waiting. Uh, things are calm. Um, and even the cows, you can see them over here. Uh, they're finished being milked, the ones that are just walking around, but uh, they're not in a big hurry to go anywhere. They're waiting for their friends to finish up. And uh, this is sort of the environment we want for them, a nice stress-free, uh, stress relaxed environment where they can um, take their time coming and going. So uh, coming into the parlor is just as important as leaving uh, the whole process. We want to keep it uh, relaxing. And, and the, <laughs> she says, what you up to? <laughs> so what's really important is that um, they, uh, they do like coming to the parlor because it relieves a lot of that pressure and weight in their udder. That's a lot of milk coming through there three times a day. So, um, so really, <laughs> she really doesn't know what we're doing here. <laughs> So, uh, so this, um, they, uh, it, we want to always make it be a, uh, as comfortable as possible for our cows as they get milked. So what we can do next is head on down and see what's going on. I think this uh, row that we're looking at, this front row of 24 here, should be all leaving soon. Um, that gate should be going up and all 24 can come out. Uh, you can't, uh, can't, cows can't leave individually. Um, all the whole row needs to be done before that gate lifts up and the cows can all walk out. But um, I don't think we might, we might not catch that on, we caught it on our last tour, but uh, we might just go down and see that happen once we're closer in. So any, so, uh, are we good? Any questions? We have lots of questions. So oh. from this, <laughs> from Miss Burns class, uh, they want to know, how do you know once the cow is pregnant? Oh yes, well we have them uh, vet checked and they actually use um, a sonogram just like people uh, to check and uh, see sort of the development of the fetus uh, in them. And so it really is just like how people go and have their babies uh, checked. Uh, every Thursday the vet comes and we single out a certain number of cows uh, to be looked at uh, based on um, sort of the reproductive cycle that they're in. 
So we do, uh, we check and you can also see some pretty colors on our cows backs out there. You might see some orange, pink. Now, I don't know what else we have out there. Um, but those are also, uh, we paint our cows when we've checked them uh, to see if they're ready to be bred or, um, uh, or other sort of uh, uh, reproductive things. Uh, we always give them a little bit of paint to help us keep track of who's been looked at and who hasn't. So sometimes you'll see a colorful group of cows out there uh, that have been checked over. So um, that's part of our reproductive protocol. We Any do other have... questions? Yes, we do have a great question from Aiden from Mrs. Cook's class. And Aiden wants to know how many barns do you have? How many barns? Well, we have our maternity barn across the road. You saw two weeks ago, we have three calf barns. And then we have another one, two, another two barns for our milking herd. And below that, we have a big barn that we actually just expanded not long ago for all of our heifer. Oh, here comes your gate. Here you go for all of our heifer cows. So we have several barns. The gate lifts up when they're all done. All those cows can walk straight on out. They'll head out. <laughs> they won't go if <laughs> we're sort of making a, uh, we're sort of clogging the, <laughs> we're a bottleneck here. She thinks we're gonna do something. They've never seen this uh, interesting uh, camera here. They're used to me just hanging out with my phone. But uh, these cows will walk in single file back to the barn. Uh, meanwhile, you can see 24 cows are walking in. They'll be lining up and being ready to get milked. We'll run down and catch them on our way down, but they all walk in as they walk through those panels, their number is red and we know which cow is which already. It's come up on the uh, display when they walk in. So the number one cow, uh, we know her number. We have an estimated milk production that she'll be giving us and we'll go down and see how she does when we get close down in there. And Silas has a great question. Why is it called a parlor? Why is it called a milking parlor? That is a really good question. <laughs> I'm not too sure. I guess it sounds better than the, the milking barn, maybe. Or um, I guess actually we used to milk in um, stanchions in the barn. And once they made a dedicated building to a milking facility, that's when I guess the word parlor came out. So does that sound like a nice fudged answer there? <laughs> no, I think that's exactly it. <laughs> um, does milking happen for Mrs. Burns class? Does milking happen 24 hours a day? Oh, that's a great question. Yes, we uh, since they come three hours a day, uh, milking is done in three separate eight hour uh, increments. And uh, so yes, uh, it starts at certain times, the groups come in at specific times in those three hours. And then there's always um, some time left over in the end to completely clean and sanitize the whole pipeline and uh, get everything cleaned up before the next milking starts. And I think along those lines from Ms. From Ms. Kenyor's class, Connor wants to know how long does it take to milk all 1,200 cows? It's about six and a half hours. And then we have that whole hour and a half to get everything clean and sanitized and start it up again. So it's anywhere between, yeah, six and six and a half. And I think um, from Carrie wants to, or Adam from Ms. Henninger's class, the great question, how long uh, is milk good or oh, how, well, boiling? I, right, and that depends on um, your management of it. And you'll hear how we take care. Once the, um, our milk comes out of the cows, it actually uh, gets super cooled all the way down to 34 degrees right away and loaded onto an insulated truck. And in that way, we can uh, get it nice and cool immediately. And then as it heads down the road uh, to uh, where we take our milk, I'll tell you about that in a little bit, but um, uh, then they are able to uh, take it. And then it's, um, it's kind of up to them to ensure that it stays, uh, um, you know, that it's all handled properly and safely. So that's a great question. And we're seeing, um, seeing our gentlemen put on the milkers. And I think that's, Piper has a great question. She wants to know how often um, does one cow get milked in a day? Or, you know, yes, in a day. Right. If uh, for our, um, here at our dairy, we milk them uh, three times a day. Some dairies milk just two times a day. And um, yes, these cows, actually milkers aren't going on yet. What happened here is this whole group of cows walked in and uh, they had, uh, just like we want to wash our hands, 
uh, before we eat. We want to make sure to get our cow's teats absolutely clean uh, before uh, we put the milker on. And so these gals all walk. They got what I call the super suds, the pre-dip on all four teats. You can have manure up here, a little manure on the legs, absolutely no manure on those teats. What he's doing now after he got the, uh, the uh, cleaning agent on, now the milker can go on. He uh, put the cleaner on and this, this girl here, she only has three developed quarters to her udder. So one of those milkers gets twisted, pinched off. Most cows have four teats and you can see he's getting them all on and the cows are already milking. So he put the pre-dip on, the cleaning solution, and then he dried them off. Every cow gets her own washcloth. We are always doing the laundry here because uh, if you can imagine, we've got 1,200 cows milking three times a day. Every cow gets her own washcloth at each of those milkings. So lots of laundry, lots of blue washcloths. And uh, once she's dried and ready to go, then the milkers can go on. They're held on with suction. He pushes that orange button there. The suction starts. And if you look closely, this is where the teat is going in right here. This is called an inflation, the little black uh, rubbery part here. The teat goes in there. Inside, it fills with air and releases the air, fills and releases. It's a gentle massage that really helps to get that milk to come on out. If we stand over here, you'll see, here's the very first part of our milking protocol, the suds that go on. All four teats get them. Some cows like to get a little more dirty than other cows. <laughs> so some of them really need a good cleaning, but all of them get that super suds on those four teats. He'll come with the washcloths and get this whole row ready. In the meantime, you'll see green lights all the way up and down on this side. That means they're actively milking. If one of them starts blinking, that means that the computer is sensing that milk is not coming through. And, uh, and that eventually that uh, milker will soon come off. Some cows, it might be blinking if um, it takes them longer to let down their milk. It's a chemical process where their brain tells their body uh, to, uh, to release the milk out of her um, udder. And so some cows really need to think about it a little bit before, uh, before they let down that milk. So here he comes with a washcloth on this side. So while one whole side is milking, they're prepping the other side and it keeps going back and forth, back and forth. This gentleman is taking care of his 12 cows. The other gentleman down there has his 12. So all together, we'll get 24. They both work at, a back, at about the same pace. And so all the cows get uh, hooked up and ready to go uh, in a consistent way. Meanwhile, these gals over here, they're all done. They're just hanging out, being relaxed and taking their time before they go back down to their barn. So you can see it really is a low stress environment here for our cows. Uh, milking the cow doesn't hurt them at all. Uh, in fact, it uh, relieves that pressure in their udder. Uh, some of these cows really produce a lot of milk. And uh, so our average is 10 gallons, but some of these cows are uh, giving us up to 15 gallons of milk every day. So that's a lot of milk going on. And uh, so here are these cows, they are all just about dried off and ready. The milker won't attach um, if uh, their teats are still wet. So we wanna make sure to take enough time to let them air dry. And then he'll push that button for suction and on will go the milkers on this side. Meanwhile, these guys are still milking away on the other side. All of our milk is going down and through the pipeline. Here he comes. He hits the button, one, two, three, four, on it goes. The cows will wiggle a little bit, but then they'll um, get themselves, uh, you know, sort of uh, nicely organized and just ready to give us milk. And here's a nice shot if you wanna show this, if you wanna lean over and do the tunnel shot right over here and Go down the tunnel of cows. Let it turn. There you go. <laughs> and that is 24 milkers lined up, folks. 96 legs. Crawl through if you dare. <laughs> so, and that's a great over question. Here. We have a great question. Oh. Looking down the, the tunnel of cows, um, do the milkers ever get kicked? Do they have to worry about that? 
Yeah, sometimes they will kick it off. Uh, not very often though, um, because they know what they're doing. This is the cow's routine and uh, they know exactly what's going on in here. But if one does, uh, we'll get a funny blinking light like that red and blue one. That means they need to go and take a look, see, check her out, make sure she got milk and either put the milker back on or decide that she is done and, um, and the milker is just being wonky. But uh, so here you can see milkers are starting to come off on this side. The green lights will be blinking. That's when it notices less milk is coming through. And that's telling you that automatically these milkers are about to come off. And we got a couple blinkers all over the place here. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, the, there goes a milker. It'll come off and then it'll drop down out of the way. And what happens next is you can see these guys are holding a jar that's called a uh, dip cup. And uh, so what it has is an orange top and sort of the solution is in the bottom. That's the post dip is what's in there. And what that is, is just like a moisturizer you'd put on your hands. Uh, it has a nice uh, moisturizer for our cow's teats, as well as a protectant. Uh, when the cow, when the milk is coming out of the teats, the bottom of the teat opens up a little bit. And we wanna make sure that it is uh, nicely sealed and protected. Uh, before she goes back to the barn. We don't want any bacteria getting up and in those teats and causing problems for our cows. So uh, he can see he's going through all the cows that are finished. He'll give them the post dip. And uh, our cat right here, we have another milker coming off. And um, so it's very nice. That was nice that uh, we didn't, um, before the milkers would stay on, before automatic takeoffs, they would stay on and it was up to us to decide when the cow was all finished giving her milk. And uh, sometimes if you were busy, you might miss one. So having it automatically uh, done is really nice. So here he goes with the teat dip, making that skin feel much better. And we just have to wait before this row can leave, all the cows need to be milked before that gate can go up and all 24 cows can go. So I, Meanwhile, I have, a, oh, I have uh -huh. a great question about the worker. Do they ever um, get kicked? Do they ever get? Well, it'd really be hard to get kicked in the parlor because we do have these uh, guards here. So if a cow's going to kick, she really has to lift her leg up um, pretty high to get you. Uh, I used to milk cows. I never got uh, kicked from being standing here. But if you're reaching in sometimes and they might kick a little bit forward and wiggle on you, you could. But um, but yeah, if you're if a cow's going to get you, usually it's not really in the parlor. It's going to be out in the barn somewhere. And they're really curious about the numbers on the on the screen. Can you talk about that? Right. Well, we're having a screen. I don't really know what's going. Usually when the cow walks in, we get her number right here and we see uh, how much her estimated uh, what we expect for uh, milk production. And I'm not too sure our screens, I think they're actually doing a bit of maintenance on our program because all of these would be lit up with the amounts of um, milk and her ear tag number. So I can't, this is a funny day. You caught me on a, <laughs> I don't really know what's going on with the screens today. Um, and the numbers aren't changing. So I can't really tell unless this is what, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> which those, is not really good on a tour day is it <laughs> those usually correlate with their um rf uh, rf tag correct yeah with the oh yes this is supposed to be her ear tag number and i'm gonna assume that she gave us 31 pounds of milk which is close to four gallons um so that's what i'm gonna guess there but normally we get a lot more information there they go our row is all done out they go The and, gate will come down once they're all clear. And Haley wants to know from Mrs. Cook's class, how long, how long does it take for those cows to just go through this barn, through the parlor, through the system? Right, once they're in the parlor, the whole process really is about five minutes or less by the time we get them cleaned up and ready to go. Uh, so uh, yeah, the actual milking is uh, under five minutes and all we have to do is get them prepped and ready and cleaned and dried. And uh, so, yeah, the longest time is spent, the most time, I guess, is spent um, back there in the holding pen waiting. And that's why we keep our holding pen uh, really comfortable. We've got fans back there, water misters. We really want to make sure our cows are comfortable while they're waiting their turn to be milked. 
Oh, here you can see this gal, man, she is ready to go. She, <laughs> if you wanna know where the milk comes out, that's where it comes out, right there at those teats. She is leaking away. She is ready to give us a lot of milk. And which is kind of a shame that we're sort of in a uh, funny sort of maintenance, I think, phase here because when they walk in, normally we do see right off the bat how much milk we expect each cow to make. So um, I bet she's a, she's a heavy milker here. So kind of a bummer that we're, I don't know what we're doing, but I think it has something to do with maintenance. And there's a great question from Mrs. Burns class. Do you have to train them to walk forward and go through the line? When they have their first calf and they are called first calf heifers at that point and have had their first baby, it is, uh, you want to sort of bring her in with a couple others together and let them kind of show her that it's okay. And uh, it, it is a little, um, it, you know, it's all brand new at that point for them. Uh, but after they've been through a couple times, uh, then they really just kind of follow the herd. And that's why it's so great. Sometimes being, um, having the herd mentality really, <laughs> really works in our farmer's benefit here because, um, because then we're able to uh, uh, really, uh, uh, use the rest of the herd to help her learn um, the whole process of it all. So, uh, so that's kind of nice. But yeah, I've seen a couple first calf heifers really, really not excited to come to the parlor at all. So it's a it's a bit of a challenge on some days. So oh, there goes a kick. But you can see the guardrail worked great. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is follow this milk out. We got a couple more things to show you, so we should keep moving on. But all the milk comes down through right here, our pipeline system, and it turns into this room. Meanwhile, as we go, take a look at that green light. We'll talk about that in just a minute. That's an important light over there. So our milk ball comes in here. It's coming out of the cow at 100 degrees, and it gathers here with this pump and then consistently gets pumped up and overhead over here to our milk house. Over in here, oh, it's much quieter for this, this time in the tour. So all the milk is coming on in here. Um, so it is coming out at about 100 degrees. We need to super cool it all the way down to 34 degrees. That happens in these two things here. This pipe is nice and warm. This one is the cold milk going out. You can see there's condensation on it and it comes along on the floor. It's down there behind the table our broken water cooler, <laughs> and here it comes out this way. And it makes a quick little pit stop right here as it comes on up. We are sampling the milk right here in our sampling system. And uh, what we wanna do is make sure that milk is completely pure and clean before it leaves our farm. So we wanna take a sample of that as it heads on out. And then off it goes around the bend and thrack this way. And you can see there's a funny little door right here. The milk is going right directly from our cows into this thing here. And I didn't tell you what it was this time. So usually I have everybody try and guess what they think that is that our milk is making its final stop to. And uh, I'll pause. <laughs> I, got, I got a pipeline. Um, that's all I got so far. So if you have any guesses, you can put it in Q and A real quick. We'll take. You a can quick, do that. Quick question: so, and, Do you oh, yeah. do your do you name the cows? We have back of a truck. We have a milk trap. We have a pipeline. <laughs> Those are good. Yes, uh, I personally name some of the cows that really stick out, and uh, that I know if they have a heart on their head, or some of them have a seven, or even a tornado-looking thing. So um, I really, yeah, sometimes I, I, uh, I have a favorite one named Spot, obviously, because of the big spot on, right on front of her head. So, and then sometimes you'll have one without any kind of um, uh, kind of noticeable identifiers, but her personality is such that you end up giving her name because some of them are just so, uh, so funny. And uh, they're like puppies, I always tell everybody. And they really, um, they, uh, they just pull on your heartstrings and so they get a name. But there we had that door where our pipeline is heading on into, nothing going on in this door. And as we walk by the window, some of you did guess it right. You can see parked right out there are our milk trucks. They are waiting for that nice cold milk. We can head on out this way, climb over the wall again. You ready for that? Here we go. <laughs> our door has a funny lock that's been broken. So now we have to climb over. <laughs> it's all part of the tour. So here we go. Our milk trucks are right here. You can see our nice 
183 old McDonald's farm cow there. If we dip down and go in between the trucks, this is the truck that's get, getting filled right now. It's backed right up to that where, that where we saw that little door and it goes right up against this kind of pillow thing here. If we can see through there, you would see the pipe going in and our truck getting filled. Here we are waving. <laughs> so we're uh, filling up this truck. Meanwhile, this one is sitting here and waiting. If you remember that green light that we talked about as we were leaving the milking parlor, uh, what that is, is it's tied into our truck right here. A lot of people say, hey, how can you tell when your truck is full? And what we have up at the top way up there is a sensor. As the milk goes up and up and up in our truck, once it hits that sensor up there, the alarm bell rings, that green light turns red, the alarm, oh, it's very loud. And that tells our milkers that, hey, you know, they got to hold off real quick, switch the pipe over from the full truck to our waiting truck here, nice and empty. And uh, so they'll switch that pipe, join it over here, and then we can start filling up this nice empty one over here. Meanwhile, the full one is going to head on down the road to Great Lakes Cheese and Adams. All of our milk is used to make cheddar cheese. Well, wait a minute. All of our milk that goes on these trucks is used to make cheddar cheese. Because now that Old McDonald's Farm is open, you will uh, next week, this is a big part of uh, what, your, uh, what our series has been all about. Uh, we, we set aside about 300 gallons of milk before it goes on these trucks. And some of that goes to get bottled for our chocolate milk and regular milk. And the other part goes and it's, get, it's turned into cream, comes right back to our farm. And that's how we make our ice cream with our very own milk. So um, you'll see that next week, which is a, a, a yummy and exciting part of this series. So, uh, but these trucks, if it's on these trucks, it's going down the road and it's being turned into cheddar cheese. So we have about seven minutes left. Oh, seven minutes. Okay. Oh, what was that? Oh, yes. And um, uh, a safety feature also is once this truck is full and they take the pipe off to switch it over, there's a special little seal that they put on it. Uh, that seal means that um, now the truck can go to Great Lakes and uh, the Great Lakes would not accept this truck if the seal was broken. So that means that your um, all the milk on it is completely safe and it's not been tampered with. And uh, so that's really an uh, important part of uh, the end. Once you uh, turn off the, once the milk is finished going in there, you put that on and then the next time it's open is only at Great Lakes Cheese. We can head this way. So as we're heading out this way, um, I do have a great question. Um, does the milk from Gemma, from Mr. Clark's third grade, does the milk taste different as it comes fresh as a cow than they would get in their milk cartons? I'd have to say uh, well, yes. By the, time, <laughs> by the time they get it in their milk carton, it has been pasteurized at the bottling company and uh, most likely homogenized. The milk we sell over at Old McDonald's Farm is cream line milk. And that means we haven't homogenized it. So uh, the cream rises to the top and you have to give it a good shake. So um, that is uh, a big difference. And some people say the more you pasteurize, ultra pasteurized milk, they say kind of has a burnt taste to it. I'm not sure about that, but, um, but it's just all different ways that, um, that milk can be uh, processed that does start taking away from the taste a little bit uh, the more you process it. So fresh milk, um, I would say probably does taste a little better. <laughs> so well, our cream agree, line yeah. milk. <laughs> I would agree. So all right, so what I have here is a, a pretty cool story. I'm going to start off with though things you can do with milk. Not only can you make yummy ice cream, but you can also make plastic with milk. Click, click, <laughs> little bird, little strawberry. This is really cool. Back in the day, milk was used to make plastic. And uh, I just added food coloring to these to make them kind of pretty. So that was kind of neat. Even royalty, uh, they used, uh, milk has a protein in it called casein. casein. And once you, um, uh, once you curdle the milk, uh, which is uh, uh, actually one of the processes of making cheese, uh, you can actually, the casein proteins gather together in a milk curd, and, uh, and then you have your curds and your whey, like Little Miss Muppet, and you can actually form some really cool things with that. So I was going to do a quick milk curd for you and show you how you can form it into a ball. We made this one on our last, uh, <laughs> on our last trip, so we can do that real quick. And I just have two things that are really cool that you can do with milk. So let's see if we can get this one. If our milk is warm enough, 
You can do this at home anytime. We've got a cup of milk. We'll put that in our bowl right there. All you need is a little bit of vinegar. That adds a weak acid to it. And hopefully if our milk is warm enough, we might be able to make some curds and whey. There's our vinegar. And we'll stir that up for a little bit. And fingers crossed. Oh, I can feel them already. <laughs> so this is making, and this is part of the process of cheese making. So we're starting to form a curd. Well, we're starting to form lots of little curds, but hopefully they'll come together in sort of a lumpy one. But I think our uh, temperature is a little bit lower than what we'd want. But you can see the curds are forming and the whey is that leftover sort of yellowy looking liquid. Whey is really cool. Uh, because it is a byproduct of the cheese making uh, industry and uh, they have no use for it. But you know, we talked about this last week, there is somebody who can use whey. And of course it is our cows, our amazing cows. We can add this to their feed. It gives them, now we're just gonna uh, take it through here. What's that called? You civet? No, what is that called? Anyway, we're screening it out. This is our milk curd right here. We're gonna press it a little bit. That's our leftover whey, which can be fed back to cows. Cows are amazing. You feed them uh, a diet that has whey in it. They use that uh, to make the milk in their body. It goes to the uh, milk process, the cheese plant, uh, and whey comes right back again as a byproduct. Uh, so it's really a recyclable thing. So here is your curd. Now you can actually form that into anything you want. You can make a, you know, a plus sign. <laughs> you can, so there's your milk curd. You can add a little um, uh, to your vinegar, a little food coloring if you want to give it some color. And you can make yourself some milk plastic. And there's your whey left over. And uh, pretty neat. So that'll dry and it'll harden and it'll turn into a nice plastic. So royalty used to wear that as jewelry back in the day. They used to polish uh, the milk plastic and have lovely jewelry. Now milk was also used to make something else. And I have a quick story to tell you. Comes with a couple pictures. So uh, back in the day before pasteurization, milk was not the healthy product that it is today. And uh, so uh, along came pasteurization and a company called Borden's started getting into the pasteurized milk. And uh, they were trying to sell their milk, but people didn't want to spend the extra money. Even though it was a healthier product, they didn't want to spend that money uh, for pasteurized milk. So Borden's decided they'd come up with a wonderful uh, ad campaign. And that included Elsie the cow. They thought that would be really fun. People would really uh, uh, like the whole story behind Elsie. And so Elsie showed up on all their dairy products. This is kind of the new Elsie. I'll show you what the old Elsie looked like. Back in the 1930s, here she is. This is Elsie. She had two children. They gave her a whole backstory. Her two children, Balua and Beauregard, her husband, Elmer, and then the real cows, just like the Budweiser Clydesdales, Elsie went on tour. She went, <laughs> she's a Jersey cow, by the way. She went on tour, she went to the World's Fair. She had board games made after her and her family. Uh, she Here she is again, real life Elsie with her two uh, twins that she had. <laughs> and they would tour all of the uh, state fairs and county fairs, comic books. Everybody knew who Elsie was. And then Borden's uh, got into the other thing that you can make. You, oh, sorry, I just bumped into my microphone. The other thing you can make uh, using milk is glue. Glue was another product. All you have to do is take this curd, reheat it, and add some baking soda to it. You can do this at home as well. And you stir it, you reheat it and stir it up, and you're left with a really nice glue product. And Borden's wanted to get in on that whole glue industry there uh, with their milk. And they couldn't think of um, a way to sell it, to have people want to uh, have their own Borden's glue. So then what they decided to do they used Elsie. Elsie's husband, Elmer, stepped up to the plate and became the mascot 
for Borden's Elmer's Glue. So if you're wondering why there's a cow on your glue and why he's called Elmer, it's because he's Elsie's husband. And uh, then obviously the ad campaign worked because boy, did Elmer's Glue take off. Of course, it's been sold a million times from different companies, but, um, but you can still see Elmer on your school glue. And I think that's why you have that in your inquiry box. Uh, so it's a great story. And uh, a lot of people didn't even make the connection between the cow on their glue and why that is. Nowadays, Elmer's glue is all synthetic, but back in the day, uh, it was neat. All A lot of glue products were made using milk. Well, thank you so much. We're out of time and we have so many great questions still left. So if you want to reach out to us, um, please feel free to. Um, I do have one last question and that has to do with the camera person. So our camera person is our executive director, Ms. Katie Sue Carpenter. And as we're waving goodbye, maybe she'll flip the screen um, and she can wave. She's been doing a great job and that's our executive director <laughs> having fun on the farm. And we hope that y'all are able to join us next week as we leave the farm and go to um, the milk processing and see how ice cream is made. We've taken the trip from cow to health to now milking and next week is ice cream. And we hope that you can join us Thursday. If you have not registered for our um, B virtual field trip, we have one on Thursday. So two great opportunities to uh, engage with New York agriculture in the classroom. And next week, ice cream as we're heading out um, yep. on summer vacation. So Emma, thank you so much for having us. It has been a thrill and you have a great day. And all of our teachers and students out there, you have a great day yourself. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for coming to the farm.